Great. So we're going to kind of just we'll do introductions real quick. We'll get into some poll questions, kind of understand metadata. Um, but really, the agenda for today is really kind of looking at why is metadata important, the impact of metadata, some of um, the most common kind of metadata that we see, and then kind of thinking about more holistically, how do we use metadata to our benefit? How does it flow? And, you know, how do we get ready so that we'll that we have clean metadata that can then flow to you know a PLM or an ERP system, and then I'll share some links at the end, um, and we'll do Q and A. So quick little introduction. You know, you have Phil, myself. Uh, we're on the data management team. We have Jose and Adam as well, and so you know we're kind of here. Any of your PLM or, or Vault needs. And so. We'll just put the poll questions out just so we can get a sense of, you know, do you enter in metadata more than once? Um, that's something we'll talk a lot about here. Anytime you enter data more than once, you know, it's an opportunity for mistakes and unneeded work. Are you seeing the second poll question? No. Oh, maybe I have to end it. Where's the second one? And then again, I'm just curious, how much metadata do you currently use? Is it just I properties and Inventor? Are you using custom properties, whether in Inventor or in AutoCAD? Um, or do you have block attributes set up? And then if you are using metadata, do you have user-defined properties in Vault that correspond to the metadata that you already have in your file? Um, it's actually quite common. I see this probably the most is, especially when people have been using CAD files for a long time and then recently moved to a, a PDM system like Vault. It's just something that gets sometimes overlooked, making the link between the two so that the data is getting populated into the PDM system. And then I think we have one last question. Yeah, I'm still getting people coming in on this one. Oh, great. And I'm just curious how many people are using metadata from a file and linking it all the way to an item so that it shows up um, on the bomb of the item. And this is really just an interesting question in terms of as we think about the digital transformation, as we think about, you know, if we talked previously about linking vault items to PLM items or ERP items, it's like if that metadata is already there, we can share it. Are you seeing the results for the first one? No, I'm seeing the results for the last one. Oh, I gotta stop sharing. Sorry, my first time <laughs> doing the poll. Here's the first one. Sorry. Uh, well, I appreciate all the feedback. Um, it seems like we have a good mix of people that are using it and not using it. So I think we'll have a great discussion. Um, here's some more. Yeah, 50 50 split, pretty close. The next one. Awesome. So everyone uses file based metadata. That's great. Third one. And then a fair amount of people have file based. Uh, properties linked to file metadata in vault. Okay. 
and then we yeah. previously saw the fourth one, which is it seemed like. Yeah. The majority of people don't have metadata linked to items. Well, you're in the right spot. And so we'll just kind of take a step back, um, you know, on top of metadata for anyone that doesn't realize it, it's like metadata really allows us to add useful information to files, to, to vault, you know, some of the benefits are that we're, you know, only entering in once, uh, that we're capturing all the data that we want. Um, and so, and really every company in our industry is kind of unique in terms of the metadata. And that's the really nice thing between iProperties, custom properties, um, block attributes. It really kind of gives us the flexibility to tailor the metadata to the, what we need. And so, you know, why is metadata important? It's like, it really helps with the, one of the core tenants of any PDM system, which is reuse. If you can't find the file, you won't reuse it. And so metadata allows us to add more information so that we can actually find the right file. Um, and we can do that in plenty of different ways, um, descriptions, titles, um, adding custom fields. Um, I've seen some very unique, interesting metadata from like tube thickness and length um, to like the name of the machine that makes a part or um, like a rough tube dimension of what that part or widget is made from. Um, and so individually on individual files, it's not that interesting, but it's it's a very useful metadata because once you're in a PDM system like Vault, um, you can now search and see all the parts and the part numbers that are made from the same stock dimension of like a two inch, um, or get a list of all the specific parts that are made from your one specific machine and start getting a better idea of, you know, if you if that machine goes down for maintenance, these are all the parts that you can't manufacture. And so there's some really interesting things like that. And I'm sure if, if you start to think about it, the, the the one caveat is just because you can make metadata doesn't mean you should. Um, in my mind, the metadata should add value. It should be something that you're going to want to sort or search by. So this is very common. Um, you know, metadata has a tremendous impact on on uses. Probably the most common thing that I see is using descriptive words as the file name instead of using the description metadata field. And so when we think about this, we think about by using metadata, it allows us to use a more unified numbering scheme or a smart numbering scheme. Um, but it's like putting the description in the file name is kind of limiting, whereas we can have more information, especially if we added other properties like size, like color, um, you know, maybe even voltage. Now that becomes really more interesting because now we can sort by, you know, red by, you know, 12 volts. And now we can see um, button or switches or whatever we need to fit uh, the design that we're working on. And then it also impacts, you know, downstream items we can get metadata to show up on um, a file involved, but we can also get it to show up in, on an item. And once the metadata shows up on an item, we can enable that uh, column on the, the VOM. And once we have the metadata there, we can now export or link to PDM or ERP systems. So some common metadata that, that's probably very common, you know, title, description, part number. Part number is very important. Um, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Designer, like who created it, revision, vendor. Um, and classification, I've been seeing that one pop up more useful recently, which is really great in terms of, and the classification can be different depending on industry. You know, I saw an example once where they had a classification code where you could look at that and know if it was, you know, the front part of a, of um, an airplane engine, or if it was the back quadrant or the middle quadrant, where you can start adding all kinds of information, you know, classification if it's a purchase part, is it an in house manufactured part? Um, 
there's all kinds of things that we can do there. And so just kind of give people an overview. Yeah, these are kind of some of the examples. Like if we add vendor to um, an iPart or a custom part in this place and we make the user defined property in Vault and we create the correct mapping. So in this case, we have bi-directional mapping, meaning that we can either enter in the data in Vault or in the inventor and check it in and it'll populate Vault or we can edit the metadata in Vault and have it update the file. And so it's very useful, especially for um, standard I properties on legacy files, being able to go back and add metadata. Um, and then once we have the correct mapping, you know, we can create an item. And once we create the item, we, as we can see down here, as we have the metadata populate the item, then we can get it on the bill of material. And once we get on the bill of material, you know, that's when we can get things to sync or export to PLM or ERP. And this is very easy in terms of, especially if you're a, an early customer or an early on, and you don't have an ERP system yet, you know, if you have clean data and clean metadata in Vault, you know, exporting and importing metadata into an ERP is quite simple because, you know, as we can imagine, all the data kind of moves in one direction. Um, it comes a little bit more challenging later if you've been running an ERP system or PLM and, you know, a PDM system in parallel and been manually exporting um, bill materials and things like that. When it comes time to start thinking about linking those two systems, um, it's like you can link one for one on the part number or the item number. Um, but then the question comes is, where's the record of truth? Is the description right in ERP or is the description right in Vault and which one overwrites the other? Um, and that's really goes back to clean data. Um, because, you know, if you don't have smart numbering system, if you just have a, a dumb numbering that doesn't have enough value. And so you really have to rely on tribal knowledge and the actual model or um, the description to really understand, especially when you think about things like, like a quarter inch bolt, a quarter inch zinc coated bolt, um, those subtle differences might not be obvious in the part number, but having that in the description makes a big difference. And then again, as we think about the way that metadata flows, we, you know, it, it goes back to things that we've talked about before about, you know, clean modeling, get to get a clean bill of material so that your bill of material matches between the systems if you don't have a difference between an engineering bomb and a PLM bomb. But these are the things that we have to think about as we're doing the prep work of what metadata adds value, what metadata do we need to see on the bill of material, and then in the end, what metadata do we want to update or add to the ERP that's going to add value? Um, and this goes back because every company is different. You know, if you're tracking vendor or um, purchasing in the ERP, you might not need vendor at the file level, but you might need the description to be accurate enough so that purchasing can work with different vendors to make sure that they're quoting the same exact um, part with the same tolerances. And so that's where, you know, having metadata like properties of like size, code, a property for coding, um, and there's pros and cons to putting that information in the description versus having a property specifically for material and then a different one specifically for finish or for coding. And the nice thing about that is you can sort by multiple columns. Um, and then it, the metadata is only good as it is if it's filled out and if it's filled out correctly. Because you know, if everyone uses a different abbreviation for a certain coding, when you sort it, you're not going to necessarily find all the parts that you want. And then some of the other benefits of mapping metadata is that you know we only enter it once. You can find what we want. Um, again, I can't stress this. Metadata should add value to the file. Getting end users to type in data that no one's going to search or sort by, in my mind, doesn't make sense. Um, and the other benefit is the non-compliant equivalence flag in Vault, which lets us know if 
there's metadata filled out in a file that it hasn't been updated in Vault. And the nice thing about that is that you know we can prevent Vault can prevent the end user from releasing files that has metadata that's out of sync. And this is extremely important when it comes to let's say a rev number. And so if you have the rev number, the system rev linked to um, the assembly and someone keys in the wrong rev letter, Vault can let you know that it's out of sync so you can't release it. So this kind of helps um, make it so that you don't accidentally release a drawing that has the wrong rev in the drawing, which is really helpful in terms of accidentally preventing um, manufacturing from thinking that it's a different rev when the data on the drawings inconsistent. And so I'll send out these resources in a moment, but I'm gonna to skip to um, Vault for a second, because I really wanted to isolate a few things as we're answering some questions um, and kind of point out probably the three subtle features in Vault when it comes to metadata that I think goes unnoticed. Um, and so I'm gonna just do a quick intro real quick for anyone that isn't familiar. So the easiest way to create a new property in Vault, in my opinion, is to make the file first, add the metadata to it, check it into um, Vault, and then come in here and actually create a property. And so we have to remember when we're creating a property, I'll just make something basic. It can, doesn't matter what it could, it could be named anything. The most important thing is really kind of thinking about which category the file, the property has to go to. And that all goes back to which property or categories that particular file is going to. So these are the out of the box categories. I've seen some vaults where every part has, you know, part has its own category. Um, assemblies have their own category and drawings have their own categories. And that makes sense for some companies that have drastically different properties depending on the file types. Um, in this case, I just put everything to base. Um, and so this is very common. And then once we create a property in Vault, we have to make a mapping. So just having this property here isn't enough. We need to make a mapping so that we actually extract um, the file from or the metadata from the file. And so I don't have a property yet, so we'll come back and let's go make one real quick. Let's get this thing out of my way. Um, so if I go into AutoCAD, we'll just make a new file real quick. So there's plenty of different ways. I won't go into block attributes today, but um, there's a whole article on how to do it. But when we're creating the mappings, we have to make a mapping for every type. So we would do this for AutoCAD, we would do this for um, Inventor. And so we have to make sure that the, if we're making a custom property, we gotta make sure that the name of the property matches. Um, and that way it just makes it easier for the end users that are filling out that they know that they don't have to match, but it makes sense to make them match so that everyone knows um, the property in the file matches the property in Vault. And so for custom properties, it's fine for us to just type one in, but I find anytime you're gonna make um, properties that you want people to fill out, that's where we would really want to edit like start parts so that the property is always here so that end users don't have to know what the property name is. They can just update the value. Um, that's good enough. And so we'll just check this into Vault. Um, that's fine. So now that we have our file in Vault, um, we can see we're on the the base category, and we can know that because of the system property. And we can see the property that I made, ABC, it really could be named anything. Um, the reason why we don't have 
any metadata is because we don't have that linking, which is the most important step to do. And so it's when we're making the mapping, we have to choose file and we have to pick the type of file. And so we can make a mapping on all kinds of files. I'd like to just browse to the file in Vault. And then in here, we have a list of all of the properties that we can map on. And if we go to the top of the list, we can see our custom. And so there's different classifications. So there's certain properties that are in every file. And then any ones that get created in that field that are custom come up with a custom classification. And so you can choose the mapping, you know, if it's bi-directional, if vault can only update the file, if the file can only update vault, and then yes, which allows us to have vault try to create it in files that don't have uh, that property. And so if I click OK, um, because this property already exists, and anytime we change the mapping, um, we're going to get this, which is vault's just going to redo a file index. And so it's going to try to extract um, the metadata out of the files that are already in Vault that have that property filled out. Um, and so when you're making changes on property mapping, it's best to do it at the end of the day, especially if you have a large Vault, because there'll be a, anytime you run a property re-index, there's a, a slight performance hit on the Vault as it's re-indexing all of the files in the file store. So it's something to be mindful of is that you can still work in Vault while the index is going, um, but it, the search functionality in Vault will be slower until the index is done. And so while we wait for that index to finish, um, if we wanted to see this property on an item, not just at the file level, that's where the association comes into handy. We come down here and it can decide that we want to see it on items, and then we have to pick which item category we want the, the property to show up on. And then, so that should work. And now that we have the other association, now all I have to do is just add a, um, a mapping for items. And you don't have to have um, a mapping for file. We could, we could have had this metadata go straight to an item and not shown up on the file itself. Um, and so it can be an either or. which I should have, okay, so now we got that taken care of. Um, the two kind of features I wanna point out is around the re revision information. So we know that revision's a system property. And so we have this particular, we can see the icon. So this is a system property, but also has this user defined property. And so out of the box, we can see the mapping it has all kinds of mapping for inventor, for inventor DWGs, et cetera. Anytime that you have um, more than one mapping, and so if I edit this particular file, or this mapping, we can see that I've created a, so in AutoCAD, I made a block attribute. So the block name is Kativ and the block attribute is named Rev. And so anytime that you have more than one um, mapping, you have to decide which one takes precedence. In this case, um, it reads top down. And so if I wanted to switch these, I would just select them and then switch the order. Um, but in this case, whatever the um, property is and the block attribute is what gets updated first and then so if there's a discrepancy, um, this particular property wins and we'll update the other one. And this comes in handy. The other feature that I wanna show is like these two little buttons that go unnoticed. So if we turn these on, we can see if I click on any one of these, whether it's Inventor or AutoCAD, I can see that this particular mapping has a file-based mapping and um, an item-based mapping. And so where this comes in handy is um, if we're looking at the system property and we click on these two buttons, we can see 
if we come down here and we select one, we can see the order. And so when Vault is running, it does again, it's top down. And so we want this system property. So we want the item entity to be first because if this file is controlled by an item, we want the revision on the item to push from Vault and update the file. And if it's updating the file, we want it to update the rev number and um, So we wanted to update our block attribute. And so these are the two things to really kind of watch out for, especially um, in this case, if you have a system property mapped to a user defined property mapped to the same thing, um, getting this order right um, is very important. Uh, we got a couple of questions here, Jason. Okay. Uh, with bidirectional connection, how does the system know which one is right if both are not the same between Vault and Inventor property? Um, if it's a system property, the system property always wins because the system properties can only be mapped from Vault to. Um, so if I go back to revision, we can see the mapping. It's always for system properties, you can't, it's not bidirectional. And in this case, we have it set up that um, the item mapping takes precedence. So even though we only have item right now, I only have items linked here. Um, I can I deleted the file based system revision, and so this way, when I update, so if we go to an item, open an item. So we can see that this item is in work in progress and is at rev rev A. But if I were to come in here and change the revision, let's say for for instance, it was a legacy um, file that I brought into Vault and I've been managing the rev outside of Vault. And so the starting rev for that file is D, then I would just come in here and give it the correct revision which makes it out of date because, and in whether on the item, I could do sync properties and sync the properties here. And so it updates the, it updated the block revision so that um, is now set to D and then, so if I come back over here, it looks like it failed to update and that's because I had the file open. And so it's it's a good habit to close the files after you check them in so that they don't affect the syncing of the properties. But it doesn't matter if you sync the property from the file or from the item, the mapping order is still the same. Got another question here. If you had a new custom property uh, mapping to an inventor file and then reopen the file that was made before the mapping, does the custom property get the new custom property added? No. You'd have to, that's where it goes back to you would have to add the the property yourself if the file already existed in Vault because that's not going to have the custom property. So if I were to, um, and that's the other thing, that's a good point is that because I just made this property, because this file already existed in Vault, we can see the ABC property doesn't show up. And so I, we'd have to come in here and click on add and remove properties. And so it's, and unfortunately there's no other way to, add the property to show up on files that are already in vault and so it's one of those things it's better to add the properties early on because any properties you add only new files are going to see them by default you'd have to come back here and manually um, add the property to show up in the user defined list so if i were to let's open up inventor we'll see that that property isn't on my user defined custom property. So I'd have to manually add it if I wanted to use it.
Got another one here that you might be able to answer quickly. With property order, does the top one go first and then gets overwritten by the second one or have priority and override the second one? Correct. The top one has priority. And so it processes that one first. So um so if that one's blank, then if it was in the other, if there was metadata in the other spot, it would win. But in this case, for revision, even though that I have, um, even though that I have a file that has a revision in here, and technically I could edit this user-defined property, every time I sync this file, the, the item revision, the system item revision is always going to overwrite whatever I manually put in here. And so most of the time you wouldn't even want to see this property here because it's not needed because it, the revisions being managed by um, inventor or being managed by the um, item revision. Now, the, what's interesting about the revision property, this rev number property or any property that holds a revision, especially for legacy data, is that um, is that when you're doing the change revision feature, if there is a property that has a user defined property for like in this case for rev number. So if I go to where is it rev number? In this case, it's not going to do it because I don't have a um, a a file based revision scheme. But if I did, this property and this feature makes it very easy to accurately update thousands of files revisions all at once when bringing in legacy data, assuming that your legacy data has a block attribute or a custom property that has the correct revision information. If you pre make some mapping in Vault prior to loading um, those files into Vault, and if they're already in Vault, you'd have to rerun the search index. But once you get all of the files to have a rev number in the user-defined property, you can use that feature to set the system property uh, for all the files, which is really powerful. So I've got, got a couple of questions, a couple more questions. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> How is the system property different from the item property and the file property? And if we're working with files and items and they each have properties, which one is the system property? Okay, so in Vault, we have file-based life cycles and we have item-based life cycles and you have to choose one or the other. It's recommended to use one or the other. You don't want to use both of them at the same time. The same thing goes for revision schemes. So right now we can see that if I were to bring out the um, the system property revision, because I don't have a revision scheme set to this file, and we can see that because if I go to the system property, we can see that there is no um, lifecycle definition of, of defined for the file, and there's no revision scheme defined for the file, which means there's no revision. And so this little icon lets me know that this file is being managed by the item. And so if I go to an item, we can see the system property for the item and it has um, a revision scheme and the revision assigned to it. And so in Vault, any file that's attached to the item, think of the item as like an envelope and then you have files associated to that particular envelope. And so all the files, or that are associated with this item get controlled by um, by this rev number. Can you use the task scheduler within Inventor to sync properties? Task scheduler. Do you wouldn't. I don't think there's any feature in there to sync properties. What, um, let's double check. 
So in Vault, once you make the, the appropriate mapping, um, on once you make the appropriate mapping, a Vault administrator can open the AWS console. Oh can open the AWS console and can run a property re-index, which would reevaluate all the files and basically extract the files. So it basically prevents you from having to sync the properties on all the files, and it prevents you from having to check all the files out and check them back in. And so, you know, re-index, File properties and here we're talking we're about the task scheduler from Inventor program, not the Windows version. Yeah, but syncing, but this was will do the same thing if it's a new property. Oh, okay. And so you don't need to do the task because this will re sync, will re index all the files in Vault, or you can filter it by a specific file. Whereas if you were using the inventor task scheduler at the bottom. Yeah, so you can check files in and out of Vault, which would essentially update the files, but there's no need to do it this way when you can just re-index the files in Vault. Um, or in the Vault client, you can just right mouse click on any file or, you know, in groups of 100, I think. And um, so anytime you run a, a rebuilt system index, Vault's so we'll talk about this in a minute when it's done, but the property compliance. So it doesn't necessarily know if the metadata that, that's in Vault is different than the metadata in the file. And so by doing a re-property index, this brings those two back so that the data in Vault is identical to the metadata in the file. And the same thing happens when you do um, action sync properties, is that if there's, Let's get zoom on my way. If there's a discrepancy, it'll try to update the, the files. And the same thing with Inventor. So if I were to change, and this is really helpful when it comes to like changing. So if I came in here and I wanted to update this description, I could just edit this particular property. Now, can you do that to a ton of files all at once? Correct. Okay. Um, I think window, I mean, vault limits you to selecting about 100 files. So if you selected, I don't have that many files in here, but, and you can come in here and select a couple different properties. So let's say I want these two, and then A, B, one. You, you can come in here and add as many as you want and then just update them. And so again, anytime you do a sync properties or you update um, a property in the background, the file is essentially, the version of the file is getting increased by one. And that's why we see, automatically see this red icon, which basically lets us know that the file in my working folder is now out of date. Um, and so once I do a get, I will download the new file that has the correct metadata. But if we go back to, if we open an item, and so once we get properties to show up on the item, then we can then add that particular field to, um, the build material, and then when we export the the bomb, we'll have that metadata in our export. And so that's kind of how we get to an end-to-end -end, um, 
getting the metadata. So we're keying it in once, let's say in this case in the file, checking it in and then having it populate the item so that on when we export the bomb, it's there. Or if your vault's linked to an ERP system, that metadata will flow to the next business system. We're being asked if we could do a video on uh, the ADMS console someday. Oh, everything absolutely. You, everything <laughs> you can do inside the ADMS. Definitely. And also, uh, somebody says that uh, you can change up to a thousand parts. It just defaults to a hundred. Okay. Or a thousand files. Sorry. I think we have answered all the questions that I have. Yeah, all the questions have been answered, Jason. Okay, great. Um, let me put all these resources in the chat so that people have them. They're basically links to um, some Autodesk um, knowledge articles that talks about how to set up block attributes for AutoCAD, how to set up so that you see um, a lifecycle state on your drawing, which can be really helpful, um, how to link so that the revision number in Vault updates the revision number on your assemblies and drawings. If you're using SolidWorks, you can map metadata um, to SolidWorks as well. If you're using AutoCAD Electrical, there's um, their own metadata that can be um, imported as well. And then um, a link to one of our Kativ blogs that talks about how to make a um, a forum in Inventor to make it easier for the end users to fill out the metadata so they're not having to go to the um, custom tab. So I'll just put that in the chat so everyone has it. And then, you know, if you run into any um, any issues with uh, setting up these properties, you know, feel free to reach out to support. We'd be happy to help you with these and so just email support at kativ.com. Um, that's it for today. Oh, and somebody asked this, this video will be uploaded to YouTube. Great. Thank you, Phil and Jason for hosting today's session and thank you everyone for joining. We'll see you guys at next week's session. Have a great week. Thanks.